going to talk a little bit about uh, the NAACP and many of you, I'm sure, over the course of the last uh, couple of days may have seen the many, many news reports that have talked about the uh, very important centennial that uh, they are um, celebrating. And maybe some of you saw the NAACP Image Awards, which was live this year. And any of you who've attended would want it live because it has to be two hours if it's live versus 10 or 12 hours if it's on tape. So we thank you for that, if nothing else. But let me uh, bring uh, Rosalind up. Uh, they shared a little history uh, a few moments ago uh, in terms of her background and her association with the uh, organization. But one of the things that's uh, most interesting is she, in fact, is uh, from this area, raised in the uh, D.C. area. So we're going to uh, get a little information about her personally. Uh, but we should note that she is the vice chair of the NAACP Board of Directors. And though we hear often about the CEO and the president, I will tell you as a collective, the Board of Directors uh, with this organization is very powerful and very influential in terms of the direction uh, that they go. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, please give a rousing round of applause to Rosalind Brock. Welcome. So I, I mentioned that uh, you're from this area. Give us just a brief synopsis of, of who you are, where you're from, and more importantly, why you decided at such a very young age, and you, really it became uh, a passion of yours, I suspect, before college, but you really jumped in uh, the water during college. So give us a sense of who, who you are and why you've been, become so involved in this. Thanks so much, Ed, and thank all of you for being here uh, this morning, almost this afternoon. Um, I w am a native Floridian, uh, born in Florida, and my parents moved to the uh, Fort Washington area. And I'm so pleased when I walked in this morning to see a young woman who grew up with my family, Ms. Kia Farlow. It's six degrees of separation, so let's give her a big, big round of applause for the work that she's doing and to see that her mom is here as well. But I grew up in Fort Washington, attended an historically black college and university, Virginia Union University. Uh, graduated with bu in business administration, have a master's degree in health services administration from George Washington University, and then went on to uh, the MBA program at Northwestern uh, in Evanston, Illinois, and am currently working on a another master's degree uh, in preparation for a doctorate degree in healthcare theology. So that's my background in a nutshell. Um, I grew up uh, in the Northern Virginia area. I'm very pleased to have a sister friend here from our sister organization, Ms. Laverne Chapman, who's president and CEO of the Northern Virginia um, Urban League, but grew up in a very progressive church in Northern Virginia and was involved in a youth religious group and then became aware of this organization called the NAACP, not really knowing what it was about, but on the campus of Virginia Union seeing that there was a group of dynamic and energized young people who wanted to do something about what was happening in their community, particularly around voter registration and voter education. And so I said, Let's, let me think about this organization and let me become a part of it. Look, so many people talk about the idea of if you are a, a certain age, you grew up in a life often as an African-American of segregation, discrimination and the like. And then, uh, fortunately, as the generations went on, things got easier. Now, one would suggest that you did not grow up in the, the heat of uh, the civil rights movement and the height of segregation. What was it that caused you to want to give back and believe that this uh, was your calling? Was it something that you were raised with? Was it the church? Was it all of the above? I think it was all of the above, particularly my um, relationship and growing up in a very progressive African-American church in Northern Virginia. But then also the sense of giving something back. Um, I tell people I didn't march with Malcolm or protest with Martin Luther King Jr. I was born in 1965, almost at the end of the civil rights movement. But I understood inherently that I had an obligation and a responsibility to give back, uh, to follow in a long tradition of men and women who wanted to uh, have things better for their community. And that's why I got involved. I want to talk a little bit about the idea before we get into the history of, of uh, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Uh, but there are those who will suggest that this is a quote unquote black organization. But it is not. To a, to a great degree, it's important to note that it was not founded solely by blacks and never has only assisted African Americans. Absolutely. I take great pride in uh, doing an education moment as I move around the country 
and letting folks know that the NAACP was started by Caucasians, a group, a multicultural group of Caucasians who met uh, in 1909 in a brownstone in New York City. So I'm sure how many of that is an aha moment for those of you in the room? Did not know. NAACP is not a black organization. It is an organization of individuals who believe in the American dream, who really want equality, liberty, and justice for everyone. And we would submit that the NAACP has done more for people outside of the organization than it has done, uh, particularly for uh, people of color. Uh, the women's movement uh, created um, was advanced uh, by the work of the NAACP. And so I think that as we move forward into the future, the NAACP has a huge opportunity to regroup and to call home the full multicultural aspect of American society to come back into this organization and continue to move it forward. Now for you, I know that you had a grand opportunity to um, work with one of uh, the stellar names of the NAACP, uh, Dr. Ben Hooks, Absolutely. who is a, a, a wonderful man and still, we should say, going strong. Yes. But when you think back at the uh, names that have marched through there, uh, James Weldon Johnson, Ida B. Wells, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, Walter White, uh, Roy Wilkins, and, and so many others, uh, and, and the kinship that the organization has had uh, through every important uh, race issue in particular in this country. Uh, give me a sense of when you formally became a true uh, a, a member, uh, how that must have felt for you to follow in the footsteps of, of these great people. I guess when I think about uh, my journey uh, in the NAACP, which has been almost 25 years now, um, I started when I was 19 years old um, at Virginia Union. And I've had the opportunity through the NAACP to meet every president of the United States since 1985. I've met every sitting governor, senator, congressperson across this country, have been able to gauge, engage some of the leading political, social, and economic uh, leaders in our country, all because of the five letters of that brand of the NAACP. It moves mountains for so many people. And I think that uh, Dr. Hooks, who was my late husband's godfather, I had the opportunity to serve under his tutelage, a powerful, powerful voice for freedom and justice in this country. Um, but the, there's so many men and women whose names you will never know, who sacrifice so much uh, for the organization and for society as, in, as, as a whole. Now let's bring it forward to today and talk a little bit about what we have heard. Uh, we are now in the day of uh, Obama. I think when we were last here with Kathy Hughes, we talked about the opportunity and the chance. Uh, and I think I would bet, I would still bet that most of you uh, assumed it was not going to happen. Everybody has a bumper sticker, a t-shirt, a mug, and something now, and everybody swears they were on board from day one, but that they was not, not the case. They were not. We won't call any names, <laughs> but that was not the case. Uh, but because of this, we have seen a shift in the belief by many that the country has seen a sea change, and while uh, there has been obviously uh, a, 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 an historic change that has occurred because of this election, uh, it has not eradicated some of the problems of race and racism in this country. So first of all, talk to me about the sense of how the organization sees the importance of the election, and secondly, the idea of still needing to battle and combat racism. I think Tyler Perry really summed it up at the 40th annual NA ACP Image Awards. He said there would be no O-B-A-M-A -A if there was not a N-A-A-C-P. He put it in the context, um, but not only the NAACP, but organizations like the Urban League, uh, SCLC, um, organizations who moved the bar and paved the way for uh, a Barack Obama uh, phenomenon. I think uh, the NAACP owes a huge debt of gratitude to all Americans for all walks of life.